G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Now today we're doing a lens review and road test of the Sigma 16mm f1.4 lens for the Canon EFM mount. So this could be a good pairing for my M50 or any other M mount camera in the Canon range. So if you want to find out if it's a good lens for your little camera, well then stick around. And welcome back. Now, historically on my M50, I've been using the EFM 22mm prime lens in order to do some portrait photography and get some uh, blurry backgrounds as well as some macro photography. It's a good all-round pancake lens that uh, gives you an f2 aperture, which is pretty good. But because it's a uh, 22 millimeter and because of the, I guess, the cropping that you get out of this particular sensor, then um, it's not really good for vlogging. So for vlogging, I've been using the Canon EFM 11 to 22 millimeter, uh, which is a, a nice lens as well but it's only an f.4 aperture so you don't tend to get you know good blurriness in the background especially when you're walking around trying to do some vlogging so i've been on the market for a new lens in order to accomplish that goal so how do i get good aperture but also you know can use it for some kind of vlogging or maybe portrait photography as well so then comes in sigma who have released three new lenses in their range uh, for the e EFM mount, but as well as the E mount, so they've made the same lens in different versions for different cameras. But obviously, me, me being an EFM mount user, uh, I went for the N mount one. So I think this lens is going to be awesome for vlogging. We have the 16 millimeter that's going to help us with the field of view, and then we have the f1.4 aperture that's going to help us with the depth of field, helping us create those really smooth backgrounds. So let's slap this onto the M50, take it outside, and see if we can do some test shots and then let's bring it back inside and and do a bit of a uh, let's say a, a talk through about how it feels on the camera and what to expect when uh, you put it on the camera yourself and here we are outside so as you can see I've got the lens on and it's actually looking really beautiful I can actually see that the, the uh, blurriness of the background is beautiful so I've got it set at its maximum aperture of f 1.4 so there is no way that you're gonna be able to use this lens at that aperture on a sunny day like this without using an ND filter so I've got a variable uh, ND filter on this camera and currently it's set up to you know three quarters of the way uh, to block some of that extra light that's coming in but one of the things I'm trying to focus on is how good the autofocus is actually working is that does it impede it in any way because obviously the uh, autofocus on the M50 and most Canon cameras is pretty good so let's do a little test uh, I'm going to put my hand in front of the lens see how quickly it focuses on the hand and then let's see how quickly it focuses back on my face so from my test I can see that it is a little bit slower than the native Canon lenses, but not too bad. It seems to keep it um, nice and in focus once it acquires it. So that's pretty good. So, you know, so far so good. So how's that quality? Looking good all around, so I'm pretty happy so far. So the other thing that we're missing is the stabilization. So these lenses don't have IS, and uh, obviously the M50 doesn't have IBIS. And so how is this sort of coping? I'm trying to walk as slow as possible, but you can see I think it's passable. I don't think it's uh, too shaky. I think we're getting away with it and uh, we're still getting that beautiful blurry background that everybody loves. But uh, hey, I'm really enjoying using this lens. Good thing about it too, it's not that heavy. I don't find it that I'm struggling to hold it. Um, the actual 11 to 22 millimeter was, you know, kind of the same way. So we're going to do a little bit of a discussion back at the office to see what the difference between one and the other is. But as you can see, ah oh man, it's a pretty good result so far. Now look at that 
bokeh and all that goodness in the background. Beautiful. I think I'm kind of falling in love with this lens. Alright, so we're back in here again and um, now that I've had a chance to, I guess, feel it and compare the device with my uh, 11 to 22, it is obvious that this is a lot heavier. It's actually twice as heavy. While this is about 200 grams, this is 400 grams, so there's a lot more glass in this particular device. But you know what? It actually gives the M50 a feel of a more... I guess robust DSLR, uh, I, you know, it just it's more of a pleasure to hold when you have it in your hands. But um, the only issue that I'm finding is when I'm holding it for photography is that the hand grip, now that the device or the camera is heavier, it's a lot sort of more uncomfortable to hold than when it's very light. Uh, so I do suggest that you get yourself a wrist strap because, um, you know, accidents do happen. Now, one of the things that I wanted to sort of let you know is that the quality of this build is it is amazing. Like I said, it does feel like quality as well as look quality. Um, the uh, rubber on the ring, on the focus ring, which is quite actually thick, um, is uh, nice and grippy and robust. And because obviously some people, depending on, on how they're shooting, they may hold it in different ways. Um, Sigma decided to put some grip right underneath there as well uh, to give you that extra sort of sense of security if you're holding the camera like this, which is pretty good. It just gives you that extra extra bit of grip. Now there is obviously this is not a zoom lens, it's a prime lens, so there's no play when it comes to the actual lens itself. So it's quite stable. So it will lend itself really nicely if you're using it on a gimbal because you won't have to rebalance the gimbal any time that you um, you know muck around with the zoom because it doesn't have a zoom so that that's pretty good now on the downside obviously because it is a prime lens and being a 16 millimeter if you want to take uh, some shots of some subjects you're going to have to get reasonably close I was trying to get some photos of some pigeons and they never let me get close enough to actually take a shot with a 16 millimeter but from a static uh portrait sort of subject I can't see you having any difficulties getting uh, you know a really good um, position to get the shot so um, I'm not missing really anything else apart from from what I have in my 11 to 22 obviously this one's a zoom this one isn't but you saw the quality now I'm going to put some raw images uh, on a link below so you guys can download and see the quality of the images in raw as well as uh, I took out some uh, measurement um, photographs of the chart just to see if there's any distortion now from what I can see in these pictures have any type of distortion in the images uh, I couldn't see any type of vignetting either so like it's a nice clean professional lens and uh, I think if you're looking for something that's multi-purpose for let's say a little bit of landscape a little bit of um, portrait and maybe even some vlogging I think this is a good all-round lens now it's not that expensive depending on where you live um, you could pay you know 400 US dollars between 400 and 500 US dollars um, and it is a very reasonable price uh, for the EFM mount which lacks quality lenses there are a couple of good ones that uh, I always rely on like the 11 to 22 or like the pancake 22 uh, millimeter uh, lens but there's really very little options so I'm really happy that Sigma's come to the party and given us a few more prime lenses to actually play around with 
So that is it. I really didn't have much more to say apart from if you're looking for something, go into your camera store and play around with this particular lens because I think as a wide angle 60 millimeter, you're gonna love the way it feels. You're gonna love the way it actually just blends itself with this uh, with this mount. And the M50, it's almost got like a second lease of life. So I'm pretty happy with it. So. Sigma 16 millimeter f 1.4 which is quite amazing you're going to get some beautiful bokeh out of it so that's it if you like the video give me a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and hopefully you get a chance to try this lens out because I'm pretty happy with my purchase and until the next time ciao for now